and show that Yes, everyone needs a car to do certain things, but we also need to be able to transfer safely from place to place. Having WMATA in our downtown has been an absolute um, godsend, a gift, I believe, in many, many ways. But how do we help WMATA um, reimagine what WMATA should be and maybe bring in housing and other areas to, to other items to, to be more inclusive, more connected to us? Uh, how do we get pedestrians safely across 355 and um, imagine a green space maybe somewhere? So I challenge us all to put away the old ideas and open our eyes to new um, thoughts. Do all the research you want to do and bring your best ideas forward. This is the beginning of a real opportunity. And, and with that, I really want to thank um, WMATA, your partners, and I'm going to hand it over to Steve. Uh, Segerling with WMATA, Martin Zogren with Sasaski, and I believe I just got a text to say that I'm handing it off to Stephen Riley when I finish, so I apologize for that, but thank you all so much for the opportunity and take it away. Thank you, May, I really appreciate that. Uh, that Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, so um, as the mayor mentioned, I'm Stephen Riley. Uh, I am with HR and Advisors um, and joined by colleagues at both Sasaki and BHB. Um, together, we're supporting WMATA um, in, in the work and, and really you know, thinking through visioning for um, the future of, of Rockville Station and doing that in, in collaboration both with WMATA and with the city of Rockville. So um, you know, we've formed a technical advisory team and, and um, you'll hear from us sort of throughout this evening um, in terms of the, the work that we're doing and, and how we're approaching this work, um, but wanted to sort of frame that up front in terms of who all of the, uh, the active folks are um, engaged in, in this study. Um, in addition to that, we'll also have a steering committee um, guiding the project that includes a number of folks from um, the city, county, um, making sure that, that we're really getting input um, from various stakeholders th throughout the, the course of this work. Um, I wanna start just with a brief project introduction um, before uh, passing it off to Martin to get into the sort of details and um, goals around the work that we're doing this evening. Um, but want to start just in noting, you know, that we were, as the mayor noted, very excited to be, you know, undertaking this work and supporting WMATA and in, in thinking through you know, a future vision for the station. Um, the station is a critical asset for the city of Rockville and there's, there's a lot of opportunity as we think about, you know, what does this visioning look like for the future? Um, you know, what is the potential hold uh, at the station itself? Um, and so a part of the study will be you know, taking into account a number of different things. I think you know, first and foremost is the transportation functions that exist on the site today and that you know, will be needed on the site into the future. Um, and that includes not only you know, metro and bus, um, but also thinking about bicycle, pedestrian activity, parking, um, you know, kiss and ride, other functions that, that serve um, sort of the broader transit infrastructure that exists and thinking through how this the station exists um, you know, as a transit center. Um, in addition to that, we'll also look at um, you know, potential for development opportunity. What are the what does you know, economic development look like on the site? Is the potential to um, develop new housing, office, retail space? Um, and really just thinking about the um, you know, general improvement of, of the site itself. Um, you know, the mayor referenced connections from you know, the site to, to uh, you know, elsewhere in Rockville, town center, you know, et cetera, um, potential for open space. How does this serve as a gateway to, um, to Rockville? Um, so wanting to take into account really all of those things as, as we're thinking about, you know, what does this visioning look like? Um, we've worked with WMATA on a, a number of, of station planning engagements and, you know, in laying out a scope and approach for, um, you know, the study of, of Rockville station, um, really wanted to focus on making this uh, a study that, that is gathering input both from the public and from you know, key city and county stakeholders and in, in ensuring that we're, we're hearing, you know, what are the challenges that exist today? How can we look at addressing those into the future? And how are we you know, using what we hear as part of that input to really inform um, you know, the designs and concepts that we're developing? So that's why we're really be, you know, at the beginning of our work right now and really focused on you know, this first point you see here in terms of our goals for the project of 
gathering input and really understanding you know, what the goals are from, from the public and, and city perspective, um, wanting to really have that as an established baseline that we then can use to develop and refine concepts um, that consider the you know, transportation, financial, real estate, and, and placemaking merits. Um, once we do that, we'll then uh, you know, look to recommend a station concept that WMATA can continue to advance in collaboration with the city of Rockville and Montgomery County. Next. Um, and then just I'll briefly touch on the overall project schedule that we're working on. So as I mentioned, um, we're really at the beginning of our work right now. Um, so you'll see um, you know, this visioning workshop is really the, the first step of, of the project itself. Um, we'll be conducting two visioning workshops, one tonight, one um, next week, uh, May 15th. Um, and following that, we will you know, take what we've heard, compile it, um, and, and present to the mayor and, and city council next month to really summarize what we heard and, and how that's going to inform um, how we approach this study. Um, following that, we'll, we'll develop our, our site concepts and um, we'll come to a, another public workshop in the fall uh, to review those concepts, gather additional input, collect feedback, um, before again presenting those to, to the mayor and city council, and then developing a final report, which we expect to have uh, complete by uh, the end of this year, so around December. So that's a, a very high level summary, um, but hopefully provides good context on sort of the approach that um, you know, we're undertaking the, the work that we're doing this evening, uh, but I'll pass it off to Martin to, to talk about sort of our goals and activities for tonight. Great, thank you so much, Stephen. <clears throat> My name is Martin Zobrin from uh, Sasaki. And for tonight's visioning workshop, we're gonna walk through some pretty straightforward and, and simple exercises uh, just to make sure that we're getting you familiar with the study area and sort of the goals of the study, high level that Stephen just um, uh, described to you, and then sort of collect some of your observations about the site today. We'll do that in the first exercise this evening, where we just want to hear from you some of the general comments about the existing conditions, uh, how you might think it might be improved, and then the general sort of function and lay of the land. We always like to hear from individuals for that um, lived experience of the station uh, moving to and through and from the station on a daily basis throughout the year. Um, Kevin from BHB will help us understand the overall sort of transportation and development context to sort of understand specifically how cars and buses and rail access move through the site, because that is really at the core of transit oriented development. So that will take place in the first exercise. In the second exercise, we're gonna ask you to both identify and prioritize some goals for the overall um, study itself. We've taken our first pass at coming up with what those goals are, and that's gonna give us the opportunity for you to help us prioritize which things you feel are really most important for the site itself. These big ideas, the sort of the, the general sort of visioning notions will help us then um, in formulating the concept designs which will carry through in the next phase of the project, as Stephen mentioned, in the concept development. So our ground rules for this evening, um, just to sort of let you know where we are generally and what's gonna take place for the next um, uh, about an hour. Um, so folks will be muted generally. There will be opportunities for comments a little bit later on, but we'll keep everyone muted uh, just to reduce that background noise. Please use the chat function in the Zoom and make those chats go to Jeff Levy. He's from Sasaki. And Jeff will be uh, passing those on to me at the appropriate moments. And he'll also be sort of working behind the scenes if anyone has any difficulties or anything um, otherwise to add. We ask that you be respectful of others, especially when you're in the breakout rooms and just listen, add your comments and, um, you know, again, have an attitude of um, uh, working together with your neighbors on what will be a great project. We're currently recording this so that others can view it into the future. And if you have any questions generally about the process or about the project itself, please follow up with Clark Larson, who's uh, from the city of Rockville and certainly on the call this evening. 
So tonight's presentation will be found at that website. And we'll copy that a little bit later in the presentation towards the end um, into the chat room. And we'll put that up again. But basically, that's where you'll go for information about the project itself. So just to sort of set the table in terms of what we're all looking at when we think about <clears throat> the uh, Rockville Station site, we wanted to put together a basic land use plan, which is to say a color-coded plan, which indicates the various uses in and around um, the station area itself. If we start right at the very center of the drawing here, you see that the uh, Rockville Station, of course, um, accommodates the Metro, the Mark, and the Amtrak that you all know very well. That is the transit in our transit-oriented um, development potential here. It's surrounded by a number of parking lots, which are both for Kiss and Ride, as well as for bus access um, on either side of the train tracks itself. <clears throat> and as you move out from the center of the slide, these sort of concentric circles of development and growth, very different on the east and west sides of the station itself. Of course, to the east is the East Rockville neighborhood, mostly single family homes um, on the other side of Stone Street Avenue. <clears throat> and then to the west is really the core of downtown Rockville, Rockville Town Center, um, the project, you know, again, where you um, have a mixture of uses around that town center. And then also um, some of the more institutional, shown in blue, uses um, to the west of the tracks themselves. And those really focus in and around uh, the courthouse area. The color coding really goes and identifies some of those commercial uses, the residential uses, some of the mixed uses. Of course, what's interesting uh, for us from an urban design standpoint is thinking really about Montgomery Avenue and its connection up to Rockville Town Center. And that bright red color really shows the areas where you have potential or existing uh, ground floor retail today. And that means a lot uh, in terms of sort of the look and feel of how you get to and from the station itself. The black dotted lines really show sort of the walk distances. The one that's closest to the station represents a five minute walk um, uh, moving at, from the station along the streets. And then at the very outer edge of the drawing, you can see that 10 minute walk. And five minutes is really that sort of sweet spot for what we call transit oriented development, knowing that you can get to and from the station in a comfortable walk distance. If we think a little bit about the ages and when sort of the various uh, components of the station area have been developed, a significant amount of the single family homes really uh, preceded uh, the uh, downtown Rockville uh, buildings themselves. So towards the outer edges, those buildings are really pre-1984. As we get closer in, the sort of the great Rockville Town Center project in the 80s uh, to the aughts moving there, and a couple of newer buildings under construction along Montgomery Avenue, uh, currently getting you uh, uh, lining that sort of the roadway, which is leading again to the station across what once was the, um, the working and viable uh, pedestrian bridge moving closer. Of course, what's really interesting is to sort of see the city parklands and the potential this project has for really being a part of that network um, as we've seen in previous studies for the site itself. <clears throat> Some existing photographs of the site today, you sort of see the large uh, parking lot in the upper <clears throat> left-hand corner, uh, east of Rockville Station towards the residential neighborhood in the upper right, the sort of the well-known uh, station entrance, which is going below the tracks with the uh, uh, familiar um, octagonal tiles of the metro system that we all know and love in Washington, D.C. <clears throat> uh, the pedestrian bridge, which currently is closed, um, undergoing some different types of repairs, but that sort of large span over Rockville Pike itself. One of the challenges as you move from the town center area of Montgomery Avenue toward that pedestrian bridge is really the series of steps and or elevator that you need to take in order to get access to the station itself. Two bigger picture views include the pedestrian bridge over Rockville Pike itself and the sort of the abundance of automobile traffic 
that maybe we can begin to change, as well as then the sort of abundance of parking lots in the lower view, but importantly, making sure that this is a transit served, a transit rich area that we all know today. So just to familiarize yourselves with uh, the area of the site itself. So Kevin from BHB is gonna walk us through a little bit of the transportation context in a series of slides that show the various modes of transit coming to and from the site. Thank you, Martin. Um, again, I'm Kevin Keeley with VHB, and uh, we are working closely with Sasaki and HRNA here um, on this exciting project. And just wanted to give a little bit of context uh, on the, from a transportation perspective, if we could advance a slide here. Uh, I think before I dive into the to the transportation context, uh, I think it is helpful just to touch on the concept of transit-oriented development. Uh, I, I, I'm sure many folks are familiar with it, or at least have heard of TOD. But um, just wanted to highlight this is this is what we're aiming for: is is um, with with looking at um, potential development around and enhancements to the station site. Uh, we're looking to, to keep things compact. Um, so these are, are kind of several markers of, of TOD. Um, compact development uh, with a mix of uses. So dense, uh, walkable, uh, human scale, which goes in, in uh, hand in hand with walkable. We want it to be welcoming to uh, to all users, uh, and and particularly welcoming to uh, those folks not in vehicles, um, on foot, on bike, uh, on other uh, micro mobility, um, uh, and uh, kind of emphasizing the uh, the transit in the name TOD, uh, a, a plethora of transportation choices, so having options. Uh, to get around by transit, uh, by alternative modes of, of transportation. Uh, and then uh, many TOD projects are, uh, do feature a public-private coordination um, with uh, the public sector, private developer, and, and other entities. And I'll just highlight the, the, uh, the photo from Clarendon in Arlington, Virginia, uh, as, as a great example of um, of TOD and, and really uh, uh, an amazing amount of development uh, and enhancement as a result of um, uh, of a metro station and really centered on on the, the transit connectivity associated with the metro. Next slide. So I, I think we want to walk through. Uh, I'll. I'll, I'll try to just touch briefly on each of these different components, but um, as I'm sure most or all of you are aware, uh, there's a lot going on at the Rockville Metro Station um, uh, across a variety of modes, a variety of uses, and in a relatively compact footprint. So I, we just wanted to walk through kind of mode by mode uh, the, the key elements and really the key considerations that uh, that will come into play as, as we move through this effort. Uh, first and foremost uh, on this slide is the, the metro itself. Uh, so you have the station entrances, the platform and uh, and the tracks. And you can see here that uh, that really bisects the, the site. So you have two distinct sides to the, the station area of the west side and the east side. Uh, the, the positive is that you do have access to the station from both sides, um, and there is some connectivity across the two sides, but uh, it also uh, poses a bit of a challenge in that uh, you have two pretty distinct parcels here um, with uh, currently with, with transportation uses on both sides of the station. Uh, this is a, a well-used metro station, uh, also a... Um, uh, a major um, bus hub as well, uh, as I'll, I'll mention on a, a subsequent slide. Uh, next slide. 
And so the, the pedestrian bridge is, is one of the most obvious uh, transportation uh, infrastructure pieces on the site and adjacent to the site. Um, and it, it really is, it's there to, to um, counter the kind of intimidating environment created uh, in, in part by Maryland 355, uh, which in this section is six lanes and as it approaches intersections, it gets even wider. Um, and so Maryland 355 really is, uh, as I'm sure many are familiar, uh, it's both a psychological and, and a physical barrier to pedestrian connectivity, especially to those dense areas to the west in the, the town center and the downtown. Um, the Ped Bridge is, uh, as I mentioned, an, an attempt to, um, to counter that uh, barrier, um, but it, it, because of its circuitous routing and sort of up-down up down, uh, nature, um, it tends to be underutilized and, and there's a lot of crossing just at grade across uh, Maryland 355. That said, there is, uh, you'll see the, the mode of access pie chart indicates that uh, the most uh, walk is the um, most popular mode of access for reaching the, the station. Um, and really we feel that if we can, if we can reconfigure and, and kind of right size the transportation components here and the, the infrastructure um, we'll, we'll be able to, to really make this a much more walkable and welcoming um, environment for Metro customers and, and anyone else who's traversing the site. Next slide. Uh, the next mode is bicycle and uh, it's, there's um, on-site bike parking um, for, for this mode, but really uh, there's a little bit of on-street bike lane infrastructure to the west uh, towards the town center. Um, and otherwise there, it's really challenging to, to get to the station on a bike. Um, very limited dedicated facilities in the area. Uh, and I, that, that I think is borne out in the mode of access pie chart uh, where you see that 1% of Metro customers access the station by bike. Um, not surprising given, given the, the limited infrastructure in the area. However, um, uh, a full third of park and ride customers who park at the station currently uh, live within what we call the bike shed or within a 15 minute bike ride. Uh, so that's that's a, a huge opportunity there to perhaps capture some proportion of, of those folks um, through other modes, whether it's bike or uh, or transit or or other forms of uh, micromobility. Next slide. Uh, as Martin mentioned, also have um, the Mark uh, Mark Station and Amtrak stop here. At, uh, at Rockville, which makes it a, a bit unique uh, among metro stations. Um, here you have the, the two platforms serving Mark and Amtrak. This is also, uh, these also carry freight rail uh, service. So that's, um, can be challenging from a, a, um, a wayfinding and, and station use uh, uh, perspective. Uh, there, there could potentially be uh, uh, an opportunity for expansion here uh, in terms of mark service, um, and there, there are plans to add service on the Brunswick line, uh, the mark line that serves Rockville, um, with the potential for run-through service to Virginia, so that we could see uh, considerably more demand from mark here um, in the future. Next slide. Mm -hmm. And I, as I mentioned, um, Rockville is a very active uh, bus hub. Uh, we, have, we have two bus loops, one on the west side with six bays and one on the east side with four bays. And then there's another, um, another stop on street stop on uh, northbound uh, Maryland 355. Um, after walk, this is the, uh, this is the second most uh, popular mode of access for Metro customers. 
uh, and it's really, particularly on the west side, it's it's um, it's quite constrained. It's uh, it's a tight footprint, um, and uh, along with the kiss and ride there, it's just um, can be challenging to access or to to leave the site, um, particularly with congestion on uh, the surrounding roadways. Uh, this is um, slated for BRT service, so two BRT lines. Uh, our plan to, to serve Rockville, uh, Maryland 355 BRT and Veers Mill. And those will provide uh, new, very high quality, high frequency service um, and really uh, will, will just further enhance this location as a multi, multimodal transportation hub. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Kiss and Ride, as I mentioned, um, is uh, is also split uh, east and west. So, like bus, it it has uh, it's served on both sides of the station. Uh, again, left, the west side, west side is uh, is quite constrained. A uh, lot of congestion on site because of commingling of uh, vehicles. Uh, picking up and dropping off passengers and, and the buses exiting and entering the, the bus loop. Um, this, this with bus could, could really represent a, a great opportunity to consolidate facilities, uh, create more efficient use of space and really reduce confusion, uh, enhance connectivity across modes here, um, and then also free up uh, space potentially for other uses as well. Uh, next slide. And finally, we have park and ride. Um, uh, this is all centered on the east side of the, the station uh, with a, a, a large surface parking lot. Um, this is the, the single largest component of infrastructure, transportation infrastructure in the, in the station area. Uh, also represents a, a, a great opportunity uh, should that be um, placed into a, a structured facility that would really uh, it would continue to meet parking demand, but um, would really free up uh, a nice area of land uh, that could be dedicated to other, other uses. Next slide. And that just this just ties it all together, uh, shows all of the different modes and, and all of the different, uh, it just shows the extensive demand on the site. Um, across a, a variety of modes and, and really highlights uh, what a, a, a critical multimodal hub this already is uh, for the city of Rockville and really for the region. Um, and with, with enhancements, uh, we hope that we, we could even um, make it better than it is today. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks so much, Kevin. Um, Finally, one of the other sort of physical aspects of these different transportation systems coming together is really sort of the layering of pedestrians, people, and transit opportunities. So this is a series of sections um, starting on the west side, closer to Monroe Street, that highlights some of the challenges that pedestrians have currently today in terms of getting up and over the Rockville Pike back down again and over to the station itself. So here we see that large staircase, which I showed you earlier in that photograph of the site, which is accompanied by a handicapped elevator to get you up to the level of the, um, the bridge itself, which is currently closed for repairs. But basically that bridge is crossing up to eight, nine or 10 lanes of traffic and uh, pick up and drop off for buses, the kiss and ride as well as it makes its way over to the Rockville Station area itself. Within Rockville Station, you see some of the challenges of getting below the tracks and then up onto the platforms themselves. So you can see that someone with a bike or a child in a, um, in a stroller has some challenges, either if they're using an elevator or having to carry their bike up and down a series of steps um, to move you to and from the station itself and all the way over ultimately to the east side um, where it actually has that access on the ground a little bit more easily um, to the East Rockville neighborhood. 
So those are just sort of some of the challenges when you begin to sort of think about all the different sort of types of transportation modes which are coming together in this one area that Kevin highlighted for us. So that's basically the overall sort of context in terms of understanding the modes of transportation at Rockville Station today. So we wanna hear from you about what your lived experience is with the site today. And we're gonna do a small, uh, quick exercise to hear from you and write some things down um, in some breakout rooms. So this first exercise will last just about 20 minutes. You won't be given the full 20 minutes uh, for your breakout room, but we'll basically get through this in that amount of time. You'll see that there'll be a number of breakout rooms. We'll have four or five, depending on the number of people here tonight. And once you're in that breakout room, I'm gonna ask the moderators to make sure that they identify themselves as well as the note takers. And so the moderators will ask you questions about your knowledge of the station today, how you use it, what some of the challenges are, what some of the opportunities might be. And our note taker will be taking down those notes in live time with small sticky notes on our map. So if you want to point to a particular area where maybe there's some challenges around safety, our note taker will write that down and we'll put a sticky on that plan. And you'll see what that looks like. Once we're finished with those, we'll come back as a group and we'll discuss some of those challenges. We'll look for overlaps and commonalities. We'll look for some of the themes which are really rising uh, to the top. So if you go away and you're having some trouble coming back, uh, please give it just a few seconds. Um, and we should all be back here in this space in just a few minutes. So Jeff, I'm gonna let you um, identify our breakout rooms for us. And again, we're collecting notes on stickies for each of you in these individual breakout rooms. Okay, so I'm going to send you all off. Um, you're all organized and I'll talk to you again in 20 minutes. Welcome back, everyone. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. So let me go back to the presentation mode. Okay, do we have our screen? You can see it, Jeff? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, you probably should maximize. Yes. Is that here? There you go. Okay, great. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. You might want to mute yourself. Thank you. Okay, great. That makes a big difference. So we heard more than just one comment 
um, for each of the station areas, we heard all sorts of comments and it was a really good discussion. I thought it was, I learned a, a whole bunch um, from a lot of folks who are both within the industry, but also uh, folks who live very close um, to the site itself. And so, um, Jeff, I know you're going to be you're going to be uh, writing this down while I try to mention some of the the big points here, and then we're going to ask each of the groups to sort of report back a little bit on what they heard uh, here for us. And so, I'll just go ahead and start off with the orange group, which was that very first sticky note there. Um, I guess that's appropriate given my orange wall, but Elizabeth shares that with me this evening. Um, so the first comments were really about the TNC and accommodation of TNC on the site and making sure that that was one aspect that wasn't necessarily uh, picked up in Kevin's uh, explanation, but to make sure that we're understanding the dynamic for where those TNCs are um, and what parking spaces and areas of the site that they're taking up, because I think we uh, realized that the the uh, first and last mile access to the station is not limited to just the site itself, but actually extends into a broader network um, within uh, Rockville. I would say, and you don't have to write all of these down, but one of the other sort of um, components that came out of our group was the opportunity for the station to be really something special, to be a wow, uh, as someone said, to be a beautiful station, which has a number of amenities, which really, um, is and provides a sense of arrival, but also makes it easier to get to and from that station itself. Um, I think the comments about the nighttime can be a little bit challenging because it's dark and a little bit desolate. And certainly, um, I think one of the components that stood out is that it could do a lot better in terms of accommodating um, bicycles and micro mobility, again, to extend that first and last uh, uh, mile to the station itself. Um, I think there's some, some notion that the bridge itself is, is a little bit um, dark and smelly, as someone said, or not the station itself, but the bridge when it was operating, and that that could be um, very much improved. And then finally, the ADA challenges here, uh, given all of the vertical ups and downs on the station. So it was an excellent conversation. And I thank everyone who is in our group. So I'll call upon um, the green sticky note group to provide a little bit of comments. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think we had six folks in our group and I'll just quickly summarize um, the, the main topics. So there were, we discussed some issues around bicycle and pedestrian safety for folks, um, you know, getting crossing the main roads to get to the station, but then also kind of navigating through the parking lots once you're in like the station property. Um, and then also there was some commentary about just the, the functionality of the kiss and ride relative to the, the egress points um, and there being, you know, buses blocking egress points and having to wait multiple light cycles. Um, so just kind of existing vehicular functionality around the station. Um, a lot of some folks mentioned that it's confusing to <clears throat> navigate um, to specific platforms. So it's more of a kind of wayfinding and signage issue, I think. Um, you know, the, the stairs up to the uh, to the bridge are relatively hidden. Um, <clears throat> and then it's, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Um, and then two other points, um, some, there's some maintenance issues or lack of maintenance with some of the sidewalks, um, especially on the kind of east side. Um, and related to that, some of the tiling in the station can get pretty slippery when it's humid even, let alone raining. Um, and <clears throat> then there was a desire to maintain uh, some of the at-grade crossings for pedestrians down uh, by Monroe Street. Um, I guess there's been some discussion of, of potentially removing those. Um, and one kind of out-of-the-box idea uh, that was mentioned was potentially thinking about doing a solar canopy over some of the parking. Um, and that 
I think that's sum that summarizes the, the the main topics we discussed. That's great. Thank you. Okay, uh, yellow group, we're gonna move through this. Yeah, so that that was our group. Okay. Uh, we had a, a really great discussion. Um, I think both started and ended with comments around connectivity. So I would definitely say that was one of the, the main themes um, as it relates to both the, you know, the rails as well as Rockville Pike itself. Um, you know, the rails really creating sort of an east-west divide um, within Rockville, um, given the only, you know, access point uh, currently, um, you know, around uh, the town center downtown is, is along Park Road. Um, and then also you know, Rockville Pike, just in terms of being able to, to have connectivity to, to Rockville Town Center. Um, some comments about the, the pedestrian bridge as well, I think similar to, to what some others have mentioned, um, but just that it you know, is, can be sort of an intimidating experience and in that it is um, too narrow and not very inviting, um, but also um, can be um, somewhat logistically difficult in terms of where it sort of picks up and drops off as it relates to um, the, 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 the tracks itself. Um, similar to others, some comments around safety, um, especially at night and in certain parts of, of the station and around the station. Um, let's see. Um, other things that we heard, um, potential to think about um, accommodating new uses on the site that make it more engaging. So thinking about you know, retail or um, other areas that, that make it a place that people you know, are not just trying to move through, but actually are interested in, in spending time at. Um, thinking about different groups like students or, or others that may be passing through. Um, and then I think similar to what some others have mentioned, um, you know, an environment that's good for all weather. So you know, platforms or other areas of the station that are accommodating to um, snow, rain, heat, you know, whatever it may be. Excellent. Thanks, Stephen. That's great. Okay. Our, our red team. Yeah. So I think a lot of the themes in our group were similar to what we've heard. We spent some time talking about issues with the pedestrian bridge. So difficulties in crossing and the elevator almost always being out of service. So there's not a reliable way to get across. Um, there is discussion of what it would look like to bring a crossing up to grade and have traffic go underneath. So it's a easier, safer, more pleasant session experience. Um, similar to what Steven was just sharing, we talked about the need for more cover on the platform in times of rain and snow. Um, also, there's a desire for second escalators since the station only has one escalator, whereas most metros have, have multiple. And then our group did spend some time kind of thinking about a vision for the future and what they would like to see um, at the station. So there is, we spoke about um, public art and establishing more of a sense of place. As someone mentioned, the Brooklyn station is a great example where there's a giant mural that spells out Brooklyn. So when you exit the station, you clearly know where you are. So trying to bring some of that to Rockville um, and also having signage so that people arriving at the station know what's around, they know how to walk to town center and they know how to get to the courthouse. Um, and also we spent a, another amenity that was mentioned as being desired would be space for musicians. Um, so again, just the sense of making it a more pleasant space to be. And um, yeah, I think that covers a lot of the main themes that we talked about in our group. Great, thanks Elizabeth. Um, did we have one more group, Jeffrey? A green yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, sure. Great. Yep. The uh, the lime group. Yeah. Uh, we'll call us. Um, yeah. So uh, I think Marilyn, we had we had a uh, I have to say we had a, a really uh, we had a really thoughtful discussion. We had some great input um, from folks, and uh, there was general support for uh, density, uh, particularly on the the metro site. Um, Maryland 355 it was generally agreed as the the elephant in the room here. You have um, it it's, needs to be solved both for uh, pedestrian safety concerns and for connectivity. Um, and in, in terms of that connectivity, there was also the, uh, a sense that um, it it's not an appropriate gateway to the city where you have just a couple blocks to the west, you have a, a, a vibrant um, 
kind of live work play area mm -hmm. you come off the metro you don't you don't have that sense um so that that kind of gateway and and welcome to the city is missing um and then there was also mention of of activation through art um uh as i think elizabeth was mentioning um you know creating a sense of place uh through art or through through uh creating a gathering place um whether it's with music or visual art or or other programming um uh the pedestrian bridge was quite unpopular and um uh our group also brought up the the, the idea of um greening the space you know of putting maryland 355 uh under and and greening the space for uh for connectivity to the town center and, and just a, a for gathering excellent great 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 um all really really wonderful ideas and we were just um you know putting together this board that really just sort of captured a few of those but basically um after this we'll take all of the sticky notes from this public meeting as well as the other public meeting and we'll um uh, sort through those, combine them, and make sure that we've recorded everybody's comments that uh, helped us out this evening. So we're going to go ahead and move on to um, our next exercise here, because we want to end on time to be respectful with everyone's uh, uh, evening schedule. And so we're going to move into exercise number two here. Okay, this one's going to be about 20 minutes. We'll make it a little bit shorter than that. It's basically going to be very simple, no more uh, breakout rooms. So we'll stay exactly where we are. And so our team together with the city of Rockville and Wilmata has identified a number of potential goals for uh, the Rockville station into the future. We're gonna walk through those goals together on the next slide. And then we're going to ask you um, to select which three you feel are most important. You don't have to rank them necessarily, but just to identify what three um, you think are most important uh, for the station. And that's gonna give us a real good sense of making sure we're focused and clear about listening to everyone who's on the call tonight and who is joining us for the next public meeting and conveying those ideas directly into the concept vision uh, going uh, forward. We'll quickly review those afterwards and then we'll wrap up um, for the evening itself. So we're going to run through some of those goals um, right now and Kevin's going to start us off and I'll just say Kevin and, and Steve we need to uh, move a little bit more quickly so we just have about 15 minutes left for the evening. Noted, thank you Martin. Um, yeah, so uh, just starting off here with potential goal number one, uh, that is strengthening connectivity between the east and west sides of the station uh, as, as the tracks bifurcate the site. Um, so strengthening that connection. Uh, the second here potential goal is uh, improving station accessibility and safety uh, and security for walking and, and rolling modes of travel. So that, that's bikes, scooters, uh, any other types of micromobility. And goals three and four really focused around uh, the economic development opportunities related to, to the site. So for, for the third potential goal, um, realizing mixed use development opportunities um, on the parcels surrounding the station. So thinking about potential for retail or housing um, and then the fourth goal, looking at attracting new jobs that enhance the economic competitiveness of Rockville. Um, and that can be through, you know, new office development or just, um, you know, enhanced transportation connectives that make it a more, more attractive, uh, you know, location for employment. Mm -hmm. Great. And the, the fifth goal here um, is to reduce traffic congestion, specifically impacting bus operations. There's any number of ways to, uh, to look at congestion in the, in the uh, station area, but, um, in this case, it's about uh, buses, how it impacts buses' ability to access and, and egress the station and, and um, how that impacts user experience. Uh, number six is create a high quality multimodal transportation hub with comfortable intuitive access and connections between Metro Rail, commuter rail, bus, and future BRT. Uh, so that uh, here, the, the, uh, one of the, the key words here is intuitive 
uh, and comfortable. Um, so just reimagining the site in a way that uh, consolidates uses as appropriate and makes it easier for people to use, easier, easier for people to access and, and get around. Uh, and then number seven is reduce the footprint of parking on the site by accommodating future parking needs more efficiently in garages. Uh, again, this, this would be a, a considerably more efficient use of space on the site and, and free up a, a large portion of the site for other uses. Great, thanks. And so we did hear a lot of comments about the pedestrian bridge. So number eight here is to make that uh, pedestrian bridge in whatever form it takes in the future, a more welcoming experience. And so that's number eight. And then finally, I think we also heard this in the comments in exercise number one, uh, to really establish the station as an iconic gateway um, through station beautification, public art, vegetation, plantings, landscape, natural features, uh, a great building design, which is exciting, and of course, uh, clear wayfinding and signage. So all of these are very, very good goals for the station. But if you had to pick just three, and I'll, I'll say it again, just three, please, uh, for that, um, Jeff is going to launch in just a second here um, your opportunity to just check a box and then to submit that. You should, if you don't see all of these um, goals on the box that pops up, just scroll to the bottom and you should be able to see it. You might have to maximize that box as well. But I think um, understanding all of those uh, goals here, knowing that the language isn't um, exactly precise, but basically anything for, let's say, micro mobility, that would be under number two. Um, and this sort of the live, work, play opportunities under development opportunities, that might be in number three. So we'll ask that you, um, again, identify your top three, and we're just gonna have a couple minutes to vote on those um, right now. So Jeff, are you ready to launch that? Yes, and the one last reminder is to select all three before you click submit, because once you click submit, then I believe that um, submits for good. So here comes the poll. It'll pop up on your screen in just one second. Great, and I'm gonna ask the moderators uh, not to weigh in. So we'll take a few minutes for this. <clears throat> Able to track along, Jeff? Yes, so far we have 60% of the votes in. Excellent. That may be due to some moderators not submitting the poll. True. We'll give it a few more minutes and we'll get there. Let's give it, uh, let's give it till 750. And how are your numbers doing, Jeff? Are they inching up or have we reached our, you're right, without the moderators, we're probably pretty good. Inching up to 68, but okay. uh, I think we're slowing down. Okay, good. I'll ask everyone one more minute to make your choices and selections.
And just a little bit more time. So for those of you who are still looking at this, Okay, I'm seeing 750. Does it look like it's peaked out there, Jeff? We're at 68% now, so I think that um, we're about there. Excellent. And have you populated your next slide? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> um, shall we? We're, we're doing this live. So, okay. Yeah, so here, here are the um, results, and we'll, we'll review these in a little bit more detail in just a second um, uh, through here. So as Jeff works on that, please take a look at uh, the poll results. And you can see the top two are tied at 67%. <clears throat> and then from there, it drops down to our 43% um, with the multimodal. So as soon as Jeff is ready, I'll jump to the next one. He's typing away. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So out of those goals, this is excellent. It was really, really um, wonderful to hear. I think we, we had that tie between number one and number two. Um, and since um, I was the one who sort of talked about that gateway opportunity, it's great to see that from sort of an urban design and placemaking standpoint, that that's really very important to all of us who are here on the call tonight. Um, so the idea that this, the site itself, the station um, can be re renovated to create an iconic gateway for the city of Rockville and to really sort of align with, I think the call um, and the vision, or at least the um, opportunity we have that the mayor pointed out at the very beginning of this call. So it's excellent to sort of see the enthusiasm um, around uh, number one. Uh, Kevin, I'm gonna ask you to talk a little bit about number two and how um, that we're seeing as being very important there. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so improving station accessibility and uh, safety for essentially for non-motorized users. So anyone walking, biking, uh, using micromobility um, uh, is, uh, is tied for first. And I, I, that, um, uh, that does not surprise me in the least. It's, uh, I think as we mentioned and we heard in our breakout session, it's, it's, um, it's not a friendly place currently uh, for anyone not in a vehicle. Uh, and this this clearly is uh, is borne out here, and um, and will be a, a a key consideration as we think about not only reorganizing the site and um, and improving its efficiency uh, and potentially its development uh, opportunity, but really making it a, a place where people feel comfortable um, being uh, on a bike or or on foot. Great. I'm going to, I'm going to, sorry, Steve, I'm just going to ask Kevin to talk about number three as well, since it's all transportation. Sure. Yep. And um, I think this, this, uh, the third one really gets back to that um, uh, better organizing the, the many uh, multimodal components, um, the, the pieces of the puzzle in the station area, uh, and just having them fit together in, in a more intuitive manner. Uh, that's both more efficient and just easier to use and, and more um, and, and addresses that confusion uh, concern of users. Excellent, excellent. That's so good. Thank you so much. It's great to see that sort of those, those two uh, that rise to the top in terms of that 67%. That's a pretty clear message uh, that we're getting. Jeff, is there anything in the chat um, that we should be aware of? Any um, you know comments and or things to be mentioned at this point? Um, I am just reviewing that right now. Okay, we're just taking a look at those. And yeah, there were a few comments uh, from the blue green group that we just added into our board afterwards. So Excellent, thank you. You can summarize those. And... 
more comprehensive version of this. Okay. And also just a reminder that we will keep the images with all of the notes from exercise one. So if a particular note didn't get put up in the review, uh, they are not forgotten about. That's right. We'll have all of those. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, so just to recap really quickly this evening, um, we have taken some of those high level um, comments that were made on the individual maps and uh, transported them over to this board. And again, like Jeffrey just said, it's not just these two comments will be from the orange group, but basically we'll be looking at all of those comments and combining those together. Um, but we heard lots about the sort of the, um, this, this interconnection between the, the station itself and our, um, of course, you know, micro mobility or our rolling modes of travel, the bicycles, that that's a strong priority. And we also heard sort of the opportunity for this to be um, a gateway to the city. So it's really wonderful to see that there's a um, similarity in terms of what these uh, goals are for the site. Um, along with the observations uh, that folks had for the site itself. So the next steps for us, um, well, basically we're gonna run this exercise again, as was mentioned earlier on May 15th with another group of people. And so once we do that, we'll take all of those sticky notes and we'll pull them together, summarize them and look for the frequency of similar comments to make sure that we're identifying the most common themes and the most common observations while also keeping track of a lot of the individual specifics around the site area itself. So we'll have that full list for the next time that we do meet. Basically, we'll also take those top three goals from each public meeting, and it'll be interesting to see what the top goals are from meeting number two to see if those align with what folks um, have identified this evening. And basically, we'll create our list of what we think or what you have told us is really the top four to five goals for this overall study. And we will carry those goals directly into the vision statement for the project, as well as then the specific goals and objectives that will inform the concept development, um, which is to say the sort of the next phase where we begin to look at how the different pieces come together, how it spatializes, and how we begin to reimagine the station uh, for the future. So Stephen, I'm gonna let you wrap it up here for this evening. Yeah, so just building on what Martin was mentioning in terms of how we're taking in, into account the information that we heard, um, you know, just how this fits in with the overall project schedule and where we're headed. Um, we can flip to the next uh, page here. Um, you know, we, we showed this uh, from the top of the conversation, but just to sort of reiterate um, you know, where we stand in the process now and, and where we're headed. Um, you know, once we've compiled all that information, developed sort of the, the vision statements and, and uh, defined goals, we'll, present, we'll be presenting that to the mayor and, and city council. Um, we'll then be using it to inform the design, or the development and, and refinement of, of three concepts um, for the station area. Um, once we've evaluated those, we'll come back um, for a second set of, of public meetings to do a, a concept review workshop. Um, so that will be later this uh, toward the end of the summer, early fall. Um, we'll do, a, a, again, a review presentation with the mayor and council, and then we'll look to, to develop a final report uh, by the end of this year. Um, and that will really set the, the, the groundwork for um, you know, WMATA advancing a, a um, a concept and, and continuing to work toward uh, you know, moving forward with that. Excellent. <clears throat> As we mentioned earlier, um, if you do have any follow-up questions and or comments, um, please do send those to Clark at the email on the screen that's right there. And if you want information, um, on the meeting, and both of these meetings will be recorded and will be available for review later on after we get those uploaded. <clears throat> but basically, you can go to the Rockville Station Study website and find all of the information, the project timelines, the organization of the project, the technical advisory committee, all of those different components for the project um, at the rockville-station-study on um, Rockville, Maryland's uh, website. 
So if there are other folks who you think might be interested, please do let them know about the next visioning workshop, which will be exactly the same as tonight's visioning workshop. That will run on a Saturday to uh, perhaps grab those folks who couldn't make it in the evening on May 15th from 10 a.m. to about 11.30 a.m. With that, I see that the time is 8 p.m. I thank all of you for your time in joining us this evening. It's been really productive and I'm glad to see that we made it through the observations as well as the prioritization exercise with the goal. I thank the city of Rockville and WMATA and certainly the mayor uh, for joining us this evening. And we're all very excited about the project going forward. So have a great evening and thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all, it was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.